Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh, the Millennial Reefer here, and today I'm going to show you how to set up a saltwater tank for under $200. Now, the reason I did this was because everyone always says, oh, keeping a saltwater tank is so expensive. Yes, it is, but it can also be cheap. So, first step you want to do is paint the glass. Um, I just have a standard 20 gallon long. I bought this one on the sale, so it was dollar per gallon, so it was $20. And I also got the paint, I think, at Michael's, and it was on sale for $4. This um, I'll leave a link to the paint I like to use. I've used this on all the other tanks I have, and it's pretty simple. Now, what I did here is I ended up using four coats of black paint. Um, three or four should be enough, but I like to make sure no light can get through because you don't want to do too little because then you can see it, but... Four, paints, uh, four coats of paint should do it when you're setting up your tank. And uh, all I'm using is just a standard like foam brush. <laughs> okay, now here's a funny story. So this was originally the filter I bought for the tank. Um, I paid $40 for this filter at my local fish store. And I was really excited because it had a protein skimmer and it was a filter. I'm not going to keep any hard corals in this tank. Um, I'll show you the light in a little bit. But I'm going to keep some, maybe some Zoars or something easy. So I figured a protein skimmer would help. You know what? It's a, it's a great design. Like, it was perfect. It fit on my tank. But there was one issue that kind of, I think this caused mo most of the issues. But if you can see the um, intake tube of the water, if, if you look down there, it actually touches the bottom of the glass. And there's no way to fix that. Also, when I actually got water in this tank, I'll, I'll talk about it a little bit. It just, it was loud. It was, it sounded like a weed whacker in my room and you could hear it two rooms over. And it just got to the point where I had it running for a day and I was like, nope, I can't do this. So I thought it was a good design, but it never worked out. So I don't really recommend this product, but for $40, if you can stand some noise, it's not that bad. It's great for like a quarantine. Um, got a little basic heater, it's just a heater you can get at Walmart. They're like 10 bucks or good for up to 30 gallons. And then the next thing I'm going to do is aquascape. Now, I know you're asking, hey, why don't you have the, the sand already on the floor? Or why don't you add the sand yet? Well, typically I like to add the sand after I do the rocks. But because the original on this filter, the intake touched the glass, I was like, well, I can't do sand because it'll mess up my overall filter because it'll just keep clogging up with sand. So originally I was going to do this with like a bare bottom tank. I kind of always wanted to do one in the future, but it just never ended up working out that way. But now I do want to talk about the rock. Um, I said, you just saw earlier, I spent $40 on the rock. I got 20 pounds and typically if you go to your local fish store, they'll do like $2 a pound for dry rock, which is cheap. So $40 for the rock was pro other than the, um, cleaner or the filter it's the most expensive part of this tank but i did take some time picking out some rocks i hadn't passed gone with like really big rocks thinking oh these would be cool but honestly when you're picking out rock i honestly like smaller soft ball size rocks better um you're able to do more with it especially in a smaller tank like this i feel like it just ends up working out better it doesn't take up a lot of space because you really don't want the rocks touching the sides of the tank you want them in the middle, that way it helps with detritus, cleaning, you get better flow, and all that good jazz. So, that is one thing I would recommend doing, is make sure you get smaller rocks, especially for a smaller tank like this, because you get a big rock, it's going to take up too much real estate, and you're just not, not going to like the way it looks. Also, you saw earlier, um, one thing my local fish store gets is rocks with like flat pieces on the bottom. It's perfect, it's stable, and it creates a great foundation for building structures now the next thing i did was obviously you can still see the old filter in the back of the tank i started to fill it up um i already have an rodi system i made some salt so i know in the caption it says oh this is under 200 dollars." well really for all the pieces i didn't have it cost me 178 dollars we'll go over the prices later right now we're up to 118 dollars but Obviously, once you buy salt, it's going to get a little bit more pricey, but just the initial setup is $178, and right now we're at $118, which I thought was pretty reasonable for what I was setting up, but just be aware, you will have to buy salt. Now, if you are setting up a cheap tank, I would 
recommend I wouldn't recommend getting RDI unit because chances are you can always upgrade to one later but don't ever tell anyone I told you that because if you go into any fish group they're like oh you need RDI water but that's just another rant and again you can see like it was a good filter but it just touched the bottom of the glass so ultimately I ended up getting rid of this filter and in the next shot I'm going to show you the filter I actually got and it was actually um a lot cheaper um I bought it from Petco like Petco is like five minutes from my house whereas the nearest local fish store is almost 30 minutes so I, I do go to Petco for a lot of my urgent supplies I try not to but sometimes petco has got your back you know and and the next filter sorry I'm just wasting time here we go the next filter I ended up getting was just a Fluva Aqua Fluval 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 Aqua Clear filter. It's just a basic filter, and I really liked it because in the back where the chamber is, it's removable. So, like, what I like my filter media preference is filter floss. I feel like it clears the water out, makes it perfect, and there's enough space to, as you can see right there, where you can add carbon. And I love Kimmy Pure Blue. I think it's the best thing you can ever get for a fish tank and you can see out there the gray thing it just pulls out so it pulls everything out and you know what for 25 bucks you can't beat this filter it doesn't have the protein skimmer like I would have wanted but at the end of the day you can always just do water changes to remove everything <laughs> and actually so the reason it was $178 because since it was $15 cheaper than the old filter hey I saved some money but yep I really like that gray compartment right there. It's easy to move out. I have some filter floss and I have some carbon running in there right now. And it's just a great little filter. And it's super quiet. I highly recommend it. I will leave the link in the description below. Oh, here's another thing. When shopping for a cheap tank and you go to a big department store like Petco, typically they won't price match Amazon. But what they don't tell you is they price match their own store. And 90% of the time, if you go on to peco.com while you're in the store, you can save probably 20% on filters. Because I think this one was originally listed for 37 or 38 I don't remember. But online, it was $25. So I'm like, hey, you can save some money to set up a cheap saltwater tank. That's perfect. And what I did like about this one, it had two separate intake, and it didn't touch the bottom. It goes down to about halfway down the tank. Alrighty, so the next thing we're going to be looking at is the light. Now, the light is cheap. I mean, I paid $33 for it, and it's probably the cheapest you're ever going to want for a saltwater tank. It doesn't do much. I think its par is like 20, so realistically, I may not even be able to keep Zoas, but hey, it was a quick setup, and the light was 30 bucks, so you really can't complain for a $33 light. <laughs> As you can see, I haven't put the sand in yet, but I just wanted to show you like the LEDs. It's got this whites and its blues. It does have a blue setting, which is kind of dim, so I didn't even want to show you. But it's a nice little light, and I use it on my quarantine, but I wanted to use it for this instead, just because it does create a little par. Now, so I already filled it up with water, but next thing I'm going to do is put sand in it. I actually used a mist, uh, mix of 50-50 of sign to like thicker aragonite sand. I have about 12, about 13 pounds here. I had and I had two, I bought two five pound bags and I had some extra from my old laying around, but I really like the texture it makes. And then next thing I did, I messed up my rock scape work, so I'll end up fixing that later. But next thing I did is pour the sand in. I do recommend when you do this, don't just like dump it in because it'll make a mess. What you want to do is get like a cup, lower it to the bottom and just let it go. That's all you got to do. It creates the least amount of disturbance, and it went out. Pre it went down pretty quick. It took me like 10 minutes to put all the sand in there. I do have a towel in my left hand to kind of dry it off because I didn't want salt water getting everywhere. But other than that, it was a nice, easy setup to add sand. I was kind of nervous it was going to get a lot messier than it actually did, but it kind of filtered out a lot of the final, finer particles, so it ended up turning nice. I'll show you the final product in just a second. But overall, this whole project wasn't really that hard. I did end up going back and redoing the rocks, and I kind of did them when it was still foggy, so I had no idea what I was doing, but in the end, I kind of like what I did. I mean, it didn't look that bad. Uh, the stocking for this tank is going to be simple. I have a pair of my first pair of clownfish that keep 
they've moved around like every tank I have, but I think this would be more of their permanent home. And I want to get like a blue spotted jawfish. So I'm, I try to create a little bit more caves, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. But you know what? I really like this tank. Um, this is the final product. It's been about a day or two. Some of the finer particles have settled. I did rinse off the glass, which is why it's foggy right now. But other than that, it turned out pretty good. Um, I did go ahead and get the the glass top because I would do want a goby or jawfish or whatever. But it's 20 bucks. You can pick that up at, obviously, Petco. I mean, do support your local fish stores. But, hey, Petco's got the stuff. But Oh, and then I did forget to mention, too, I did get a powerhead for... Uh, uh, ten dollars used actually at a local fish store so you stuff is pretty good all right guys well that's pretty much all i got to say today so it was a quick little video on how to set up a saltwater tank for under a hundred well under two hundred dollars sorry about that but cost me 178 dollars for everything that i did not have all right guys well thank you so much for watching uh, have a great day and uh, keep on reefing